I love my job, I love my job. I made some stab proof armor. How's it going guys? Today, I guess I'm showing you how to make this super sweet stab proof armor that protects all of your vital organs and has full coverage, even on the sides. First time I ever done that. It also looks cool as heck, even though it honestly really is pointless, as a couple of people on Instagram pointed out. This type of armor is pretty dumb because realistically, you can just stab me in the armpit. I was mad, I tried to fight it at first. I went through actually all the stages of depression. But in the end, I really realized that they were right. And actually, I'm glad that they pointed that out because it really opened my eyes to a lot of stuff. So I decided that I'm actually gonna make a resolution that I am not gonna be wearing shoes ever again because let's be realistic here, guys. Let's be logical. What what even is the point of protecting your feet? Because I mean, you can still like hit your shin with a skateboard. You can make long boots, I guess. But like, what would be the point? Because what if you like hit your stomach on a drawer or something? Like, what are you gonna do? Make a big armored overalls? That'd be kind of stupid because like, what if a dog bit you on the elbow? Like you can make an armored jumpsuit, I guess, but what's the point? You just slip and hit your head on the floor. I mean, if you're gonna be weird, I guess you could dress up in like a full suit of medieval plate armor and just wear that all day long. But like, what's the point? Cause that doesn't protect you from chemical attacks or like earthquakes or anything. So yeah, shoes are pretty stupid. But despite the fact that this armor that protects all your vital organs and is full coverage is completely useless, I guess I'll still show you guys how to make it. This is the next part of the base stickman build, so I really hope you guys enjoy it. All right, we're kicking this build off in classic ZNA fashion, forgetting to turn on my road mic and then having to record this afterwards. From what I remember, what I'm talking about here is that I really don't want to rip apart my old armor to get the measurements of the plates, so what I'm going to use is this method of measurement where you start out with a center line on your building material, then you measure the width between all of the major corners on the armor and then you take note of at what point along that center line those widths happen. Then you just connect the ends of all those horizontal lines and you've got the shape of your plate. Right now something I just remembered that I want to let you guys know is why I'm using aluminum as opposed to steel. Another thing some people were bringing up on Instagram was that your features. Sprav did a video on stab proof armor and that it was made of aluminum so they're saying that I definitely should not use aluminum but just the material that armor that he stabbed through was made of doesn't determine whether or not that's a good material to use for the armor. There's still tons of different factors that you got to take into account if you're picking your material. But the major difference between what he used and what I'm using here is that you can tell by the way that he's just kind of flopping that metal around. It's like a 16th inch or less. The aluminum that I'm using is a full eighth inch that's over twice as thick as whatever he was using. And believe me, unless you are the mountain from Game of Thrones riding in a Bugatti with a lance made of adamantium, you are not stabbing through an eighth inch of aluminum. I actually did a test with a spear a while ago and even holding the spear with both hands with the material laying on the ground and putting all my body weight into it with the hardest strike that I could possibly land. It was still just barely poking through the aluminum. So if you're a normal human being holding a knife in one hand trying to stab through an eighth inch of aluminum, that's not happening. But the actual reason why I'm using aluminum over steel is not just because it's way lighter, but also if you think about medieval steel plate armor, the whole point of it is actually to deflect the blow. When you're fighting people with really heavy swords and hammers, it's actually really important that you deflect the blade. Otherwise, all the force is going to go into you and crumple your armor or, you know, just hurt you from blunt force trauma. But when the main thing that you're fighting against is knives, what's actually super duper important is that your armor does not deflect the blade because then all they really got to do is push hard enough and the knife will find its way to an exposed part. The cool thing about using aluminum as the armor and actually the reason why I'm pretty sure they used aluminum in that armor that York Sprav was using is because even if you're just really lightly tapping on some armor with a bladed weapon, you'll find that it catches the blade. Whereas with hardened steel, your blade will just slide all over the surface of the armor, aluminum just stops the blade and that's it's very, very important for knife attacks. So yeah, that's about it. <sighs> I'm gonna have to do that over with a microphone. Now I gotta make this long straight bend right here, which my vise would normally be able to take care of no problem on its own. But this part right here is a little too long and it can't fit all the way down in there. So I put a couple of pieces of angle iron here to basically extend the vise this way. Clamp it up in the iron, clamp the ends of the angle irons together. Make sure everything's super tight. Now make your bends. 
Yeah. Make another bend this way. This way too. It's looking pretty cool so far. And in case you guys are ever wondering where I'm getting these weird, seemingly really random measurements from, honestly, this is what I'm doing like the whole entire time I'm building. I'm just bringing it over to the mirror. I'll put the armor piece up to my body and turn a little side to side and I'll see, oh look, there's a big gap right there. That would sure look a lot better if I made a fold right here and curled it in a little bit. So I'll make a mark at the end of where that fold would be. I measure how far it is from that top corner. In this case, it's two and a quarter inches. And I'll mark two and a quarter inches on the other side too. And now I got these two symmetrical markings so I can bring this over to the vise and just make these folds. It's really, really simple stuff. And a file makes super quick work all these burrs around the edge. And you may have noticed that I've never really done armor on my sides right here. It's because I've never really known how to do it. But I just got an idea that might be a little goofy, but I think it's gonna work some masking tape and I'm gonna tape this piece of paper to me. All right, it looks okay, I think. Now I line it up as best as I can. This is pretty goofy. I'm just gonna sort of draw it out, I guess. <laughs> okay. As amazing as that looks, I think I'm gonna try to refine it a little bit. So I think the most important thing that I'm learning from this right now is really the angle that this side plate has to come off of the front plate at. Because if I were just like cutting out pieces of aluminum and sticking it on there, I would have thought this would be a lot more this way, like coming out from the side, but actually there's a pretty dramatic downward slant. You learn something new every day, I guess. So I'm gonna true up these lines really quick. Cut this out. And then trace and cut it on a new piece of material. What the heck? This is like a perfect fit. God must want me to make this. All right, now so on the side that has all the street sign stuff, on the edge that's gonna connect to the main plate, I'm gonna mark in about an inch from the edge. And with that marked, I'm gonna put it right here, line both of those dots up with the edge, clamp it up. I'll mark where I drill my holes. All right, now I'm gonna pop these rivets through and for no reason in particular other than to make it look better, I'm gonna be putting a nut on the end of each of the rivets. Now we can take off the clamps and drill the next holes right there. See, that's pretty good. And then obviously we'll do the same thing with this one. All right, so I got both of these side plates on it, but obviously they're still straight. So let's make like Mike Pence on opposite day and change that. A little bit. It's better, but I obviously got some to go right there. Probably have to do the rest of it by hand. Oh. That's a nice hoodie. Okay, I was hoping I could wear this battle belt with the armor. So I'm put this on. Yeah, the side plate right here really comes down too far, so if I lay it flat, there's this giant gap right here. I could fix that.
Now for this back piece, I'm gonna make the bends first and then the cuts. Okay, we gotta bend this like this somehow. I mean, I'm strong, but... <laughs> Here are my cuts. Is Keith Urban the black guy? That's Darius Rucker. Yeah, Darius Hecker. I'm retarded. I forgot I was still going to paint these. And at this point, I've weighed the options, and it's going to take a lot more time for me to tape up these belts than it would be for me to just pull them off to paint them. So I'm just going to drill them out right now. Yeah, that was what, four minutes? I would have been sitting there for probably 45 minutes trying to tape all these up. <laughs> Put all the straps back on. Now just one final touch. Radical. Well guys, that was the build. I hope you appreciated it, but what I mostly hope you appreciate is the fact that I'm wearing this hoodie while I'm sweating. There are beads of sweat rolling down my lower back right now, going into my underwear. They're being absorbed by the band on my underwear and just kind of, I'm so uncomfortable right now, but I want you guys to see that these hoodies are actually pretty nice and you can grab one here if you want one. That's all I got for today. Thank you all very much for watching. I'll talk to you later. Bye.